So hello everybody, welcome to a new video. Today I'm doing my top 10 horror movies that are hidden gems. Um, I haven't necessarily checked how unknown these are, so a couple of them may not be quite hidden gems. Uh, I think they are, but either way, they're movies that deserve more recognition, and I would gamble a lot of money that at least one or two of these you wouldn't have heard of, okay? Even the experienced of uh, horror movie fans might not have seen a couple of these. I would say. I'm sure there's probably going to be someone who's watched all of them. But typically, a, a, a lot of these are hidden gems. Now, typically, they're not going to be in any order. So, no best to worst. Um, and, yeah, we're just going to fly through them. So, in number 10 is the movie Jewel. Now, this one is borderline horror, I must admit. It's not your typical horror with jump scares or whatnot. But it's actually Steven Spielberg's first movie. It came out in 1971. Uh, it's less than 90 minutes, and it is absolutely brilliant. I've just watched it a couple of days ago for the second time, and it is phenomenal. It's about two cars who are kind of having a rivalry, or two drivers, I guess, but you don't really see one of the drivers. It's just more of the car versus the car, and it's really well done. I've not seen many movies that are more intense than this, um, and it's just brilliant in how it captures that kind of feeling. Um, so yeah, Jewel, I wasn't going to put it on this list. I was going to put a different one. To give it a little spoiler, I was going to put a trilogy that I've just watched on this list. Um, I won't say what, but this is a horror trilogy I've just watched. But I've decided I'm going to do a new video for it. Like a video just focusing on that trilogy because it's absolutely brilliant. So instead of that, I thought, let me chuck on Joel. Because I've just seen it, it's brilliant and it deserves to get more and more viewers. You know, For a first movie, Spielberg couldn't have done much better. I don't think anyone could. In 9 is a movie called Ghost Watch. It's a fake documentary. Um, that came out in the 90s. It's only like a, an hour and a half long, and it is phenomenal. It focuses around like a fake TV show, kind of like a crime watch kind of show, which kind of documents just how... So he's got a presenter, a fake presenter, who's playing himself, and it's very believable. There's a bit of, you know, dodgy acting at points, very, very minor dodgy acting, but besides that, it's really believable. Even going into it knowing it's fake, you really buy into it. The way it's done, because there's someone on the, on the show who doesn't believe in it and is kind of throwing out the counterpoints why it's fake. And there's, there's just so many moments that really uh, does deliver. Fun fact as well, I know from people I work with who watched it when it broadcast. When it broadcast, they did give like a, what do you call it? Like a warning to say like, look, this is, this is fiction. But the problem was that a lot of people watched a different channel. Uh, I think there was, like, a movie on a different channel on, on, you know, ITV. And when that movie finished, about half an hour into this show, people just switched over, right? So people switched over not knowing it was a fake documentary. And because of how well it's done, people just assumed it was real. So I think after after the documentary finished, there was a lot of phone calls of complaints and whatnot because people believed it was a real thing. People were genuinely terrified by it. So, yeah. I only watched it recently, I've only seen it once, but I, I couldn't recommend it more, and I absolutely loved it. In eighth is one called It Comes at Night. Now, I thought this one was well-known, and maybe it is, but out of the people I work with, which is a good bunch, a good bunch of different tastes and whatnot, no one's seen it, so it, I don't know how well-known it is, maybe it's not a hidden gem, but either way, I loved it, I really loved it. It's about this kind of disease that's broken out, it takes place in this forest, in this heart, Families live in there, no other family shows up, you know what I mean? Like, they've got a quarantine. It's just, again, very intense, very suspenseful. What you may notice from a lot of my choices here, and also my past horror movies, I'm not a big spiritual, like, supernatural thing. Right? I'm not into that. However, I, I don't mind the zombies, I don't mind a, you know, if they believe in the devil kind of stuff, but I'm not a big spiritual guy. I mean, it's kind of ironic, because I just, I just shouted out Ghostwatch. But either way... This movie is my cup of tea, right? I, I understand why some people might not like it, but for me, this is my cup of tea. I absolutely adore it. Um, I can't wait to watch it. I think I'm watching it in a couple of days. And yeah, I couldn't recommend this one more. In seven is my true hidden gem. This one is one that I'm almost guaranteeing no one's seen. It's called Deranged. Now, it's based very closely on the murder, murderer Ed Gein, I think it is. Um, he's got a different name in this. I think his name's Ezra Krob. But it's basically his story, and it's absolutely incredible in in the worst way possible it's creepy it's disturbing some shots in this i can still vividly remember now having not seen it for like a over a year and it's just it's unbelievable it's got a very low rotten tomato score which kind of made me worried about it going into it because I, I i didn't know how good it was going to be but 
it's, it's up there uh, as one of my favorite horror movies, especially serial killer wise, because it's just so believable. I mean, it's based on a true story, but it's just so believable. It's not your typical slasher just going around killing people. And the guy who's acting, he has such a face that's just like very distinctive and very like just pierces you. It just creeps you out. So yeah, Deranged, 1974, very good. In six is one I've seen recently. It's a sci-fi horror. Uh, again, I think it's like 80 minutes long, 90 minutes. It's called Coherence. Now this one, I've got some interesting facts about this one. I know it was shot in like five days or something or like a week. Um, I know the cast themselves didn't have a script. They got told like what was happening per scene. So, so it really pays off when you watch the movie. I, I won't say what it's about, but the fact the actors didn't know where it was going either or didn't know how where the twist was going to turn. Because I think it shows in their acting because, you know, they, they can't add any layers or any foreshadowing because they're, they're as clueless as the characters. For example, one bit I know, there was a scene where a character has to, like, try and leave. And the director said to one guy, the guy who had to leave, like, hey, whatever you do, I want you to leave, right? I want you to get out of that door. And he told another character, hey, at some point, Greg's going to try and leave. Whatever you do, just make sure he doesn't. And that's the, that's the take. You know what I mean? Like, they, they didn't do any, any takes, and they just they just kind of fight a bit. But, like, it's so well done, and it really adds into that creepiness of, like, can you trust someone? That kind of, like, I don't know. It, I can't explain it without giving anything away, but it is a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. Considering how low the budget was and how how quickly they shot it, it deserves a watch, trust me. In five is one called Eden Lake. Um, again, one of my favourite horrors um, in my top ten of all time. I think not just in gem, my top ten. Um, it doesn't have great reviews, or at least it's lower than it should be in my mind. I think it deserves higher. It's about a couple who goes camping. And while they're there, they get terrorised by this group of kids. And it kind of quickly, quickly spirals until you get to... One of the best endings of a horror movie I've ever seen. Out of every horror movie I've ever seen, I think this one is maybe first in speechlessness and disbelief and leaving an impact, honestly. Like, I can't give anything away, but it is absolutely brutal. And even now, I've watched it again a couple of weeks ago. Even now, like two weeks later, I'm still like... In di like I'm, I'm still in shock, honestly. It's still left. It's still leaving a, uh, an impact right now. So yeah, I, that one is probably, if I was doing this best to worst, that one's probably number one for me on this list. But yeah, Eden Lake, please, please watch it. It's only an hour and a half. In four, it's probably the most gruesome one on this list, and it's called Raw. Now, this one might be a little bit more well-known, but I had to put it on it because I don't think it's, it's definitely not mainstream, or however you say it. So it's about a vegetarian who gets the taste for meat and dives into cannibalism that's all i need to say it's very well done very gruesome very gory and it does not hold back and i love it i love that movie <laughs> in third is one that i only just saw a couple weeks ago and i instantly it kind of honestly inspired me to make this list it's called troll hunter and it came out in 2010 i'm not a huge fan of the found footage kind of scenario but this one is probably one of the best i've seen it done it's also it's very borderline horror because it's kind of chill and kind of fun but nonetheless it's very very enjoyable and it's very good and it's just incredibly likable it's about a group of people who follow this troll hunter witness him hunting some trolls the trolls are taken very seriously which is why the movie works so well and yeah um if you want a light-hearted fun one this is it in number two is oculus which again is a movie i think is well known but it's not as well known as it should be and anyone I I know who I work with has not seen it. Um, so yeah, it's called Oculus. It's got some big people in it. It's got Karen Gillan, for example. And it's about two siblings who are investigating something from their childhood. You see their childhood at the same time you see present day. And it, it has a good setup, a slow start in a good way. And it capitalizes on that. And it has a good ending. Um... Yeah, I, I can't say more than that, if I'm honest with you. I don't want to spoil it. But the ending is phenomenal. And it's one of those where I could see people hating this. I could see people not liking it. But I personally vibe with it. And I know I said I don't like Supernatural. But this one, it, it like ticks the boxes for me. And yeah, it also has a very speechless, very shocking ending. Which I couldn't applaud more. Finally, the last one. Again, it was going to be a trilogy I've just seen, like I've already said. But I've switched it. 
it's now going to be one called Misery, which is a Stephen King. I would go as far as to say it could be the best Stephen King ad adaptation behind The Shining, maybe. But it's about an author who gets trapped with a very obsessed fan. And it just spirals from there. He can't, he's like kind of stuck in bed and whatnot. Because I think he's broke his, his legs, maybe. Or, or some, some kind of injury that keeps him in bed. But yeah, she's looking after him. She gets a bit crazy. Goes into the, the stalkery route. And it's just a very intense, very suspenseful... Still scary, still horror -y, but it's just, it's a, also a thriller, and it's just so well done. Um, the acting is phenomenal, especially from the main woman and uh, Buddy the Elf's dad, James Caan. And yeah, I don't, it might even just be just the two of them, actually. You know, I think there might be a couple more actors, but like, it's really just the two of them that it's focused on. And they they carry the movie on their shoulders easily. They, they do it phenomenally. And yeah, that is my 10 movies. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if there's any I've missed. Let me know if you've seen any of them or if you will see any of them. And yeah, thank you for watching. I've been James. I'll see you next time. Bye.